Hi, Justin. Thank you so Hi. much for joining me for this very special episode of Brave TV. This was something that we started when COVID hit as a way for us to get more stories out um, from our alumni storytellers who do our, our shows where we tell mental health stories. But this is a chance for us to connect with you about your new film, your documentary that's out, Get Back Up, which is right. phenomenal. Oh, so, thank you. I'm so honored to have you here. So tell us a little bit about, um, I guess my first question is kind of about the band. Okay. Where did the name Blue October come from? Uh, well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was like such a drama sensitive boy growing up. Like, oh, everything was just so dramatic. And <laughs> I listened to The Smiths and The Cure growing up. So it was always like, oh, everything is so depressing, you know? But, uh, <laughs> You know, but I've always dealt with depression too my whole life. And so um, when I was a kid, uh, I had to to do some hospitalization in, in the month of October. Mm -hmm. And so when I got out, I decided to do something where I could express all those feelings through, through art. Because I was always an artist. I always went to art school, magnet schools uh, my whole life for theater and visual art and... and um, and for vocalization and creative writing. So when I got out, I was like, man, blue October, because blue is just kind of the sad color, you know? So, mm -hmm. so that's where it came from, you know? Because I always wanted to, if, if I was going to be in that situation at such a young age, like hospitalization, like, and it was weird, you know, that I was just going to get out and I was just going to just be blah. And my publicist calls me a serial confessor. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that means, but, but I'm just a very bluntly honest and I'm kind of a dreamer mm -hmm. so uh so that's where it came from very cool very good and I know in the film it was so great to get to know your parents a little bit and uh we actually shot a short film about this is my brave back in 2018 about the impact it's had on these folks who stand up to tell their stories so publicly on a stage and right. we followed four four storytellers and through the midst of it they told my backstory on how i founded the organization so they interviewed my parents and for me watching your film to see your parents it, it there were a lot of parallels i guess and where can i watch your film on youtube really okay 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 I'll, i want to watch this film eric oh. will you write that down for me thank you sure. I'll if you that. got your parents interviewed about you, then I'm going to definitely watch this thing. Well, That's it was a very short. So it's only a 26 minute film, but we're shooting actually a full documentary right now on our, um, on our teen program. So we, we started a teen program back in the fall, but enough about me. This is about you. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> tell me more about, um, in the film, you mentioned how you worked in a mental hospital. I'm curious to know like how that came about. There was, there, we didn't get to hear the backstory about that. It was weird because I was, I, I had a band in Houston and if it's weird, cause every time I look up is where I get to look like I'm looking at you. So I'm just going to look at you. Is that okay? okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's so weird. But um, I was in a band in Houston um, called Blue October. And then I decided to move up to Wimberley in San Marcos, Texas, where it was kind of like a place my family always took us when we were kids it's kind of a peaceful place a real spiritual place and um so i moved up there i didn't go to college or anything um i just got signed right out of a high school and stuff but um but before i got signed i needed a job and um there was this um uh neuropsych um uh, behavioral hospital um for uh all kinds of stuff, schizophrenics, neuropsychs, things like that. Um, it, and I was a mental health associate. So mm -hmm. I was basically the person that gave them their meds and I was supposed to take them to uh, their groups and things like that and uh, physically restrain people if they got out of hand, things like that. It was, a, it was an eye-opening, mm -hmm. eye-opening freaking trip of a job you know, getting to see children come from such a background that was just made you so angry. You know, I worked with eight year olds to, to 12 year olds. And then I worked with, um, uh, 14 year olds to 18 year olds, which was pretty dangerous. 
and then I was put on the girls unit and that did not work out. That was just, that was just, it, it was just, I was like, I'd like to be removed. It was just, it was just too sad. You know, mm -hmm. some of the things that, that I was around was just, I loved it because it was so rewarding and I love helping people. And I always tell people if I didn't have blue October, I would definitely go, um, uh, and get a counseling degree and, mm -hmm. and rehabilitation and things like that. Or, but it was such an amazing job. It was such an eye opener and, and, uh, yeah. So was, that before, me... was it before any of your hospitalizations? Uh, that was, that was, yeah, it was, no, it was after the first one, but, uh, it was right in the middle of, of, you know, I was always sad. It was so strange. I was always sad, but then again, I was always feeding my sadness with things like marijuana, mm -hmm. alcohol, a little cocaine, mm -hmm. a little bit of acid because, oh, I'm mushrooms, you know? So it's not like I was being proactive with my depression. So anything that happened to me was not, and I can say this now mm -hmm. because I'm an honest person now, anything that happened to me back then was a direct result of me not being prepared and living right. You know, the reason I was put in a hospital is because my girlfriend broke up with me. Oh, poor me. But if I wouldn't have been high all the time or mm -hmm. so just destroying myself, I could have handled it. Mm -hmm. You know, but because I was so unhealthy with my way of living, it, it didn't help. Yeah, it was traumatic and my heart got broken and all that stuff. But, you know, the, the things I did and said that made me get put in that place was, was not appropriate. You know, it was not appropriate. So well, especially of, going from that day working on a unit with eight-year-olds and being like this leader for them. And then all of a sudden getting a call and being like, Phew! just so weird it's so weird i was such a different person back then when i'm curious when the bipolar diagnosis came up like was that in your teens or was it later it was you're gonna think i'm just so crazy that's so funny <laughs> because later it says like in the documentary like when i was going through my divorce and and i got home my mom says hey we had to go to minneapolis because he was in the state hospital that's when it came out Mm. When, when I was there and then they said, well, we're not just going to let you go. You're going to fly to uh, Laurel Ridge in San Antonio and you're going to mm -hmm. stay there. And that's when it was just like, look, this is what's going on and that. But then again, but the thing is, check this out, is yeah. I do believe I'm, I'm bipolar. Yes, I do believe that, you know but I can manage it now. Um, I do believe I have depression. Yes, that's definite. Because if I don't take my medication, I'm nuts. I'm paranoid. I, I'm so sad. I cry at everything. You know, it's weird. I am just a, a this tortured soul. When I do take my meds, I'm proactive. I'm good. I'm, I'm jogging. I'm, I'm listening to my wife better. I, I'm there for my kids. Mm -hmm. But when I was hospitalized, hospitalized both times, I was drinking a lot. I was using a lot. Mm -hmm. I was not being healthy. Yes, things weren't right with me up here, mm -hmm. but I wasn't treating them. And I think that that's one thing that people don't understand is that when I got sober after that first month, mm -hmm. my head cleared out because mm -hmm. I started using when I was like 14, right? Mm -hmm. So my head cleared out for the first time in my adult life mm -hmm. enough to go, yes, you have depression. Yes, you have bipolar. Let's find the right medication. Mm -hmm. Let's find the right foods that you're supposed to eat, mm -hmm. the right drinks that you're supposed to drink, yep. the right vitamins, the right amount of exercise, sunlight, mm -hmm. positive people. Yep. This is a huge thing. Huge. I am no longer allowed to be around negative, spiritual sucking people mm -hmm. because it is, what's the word, detrimental mm -hmm. for my <laughs> life. To yeah. be able to be the person that Justin is, the spiritual, I want to be inspired. Yeah. You know, I'm not, but anyway, I'm just solely going down the wrong here, hill here. No, I, I appreciate that. And it was interesting to me because, you know, I've had five hospitalizations for mania and psychosis. You? Mm hmm What? Yeah, two were. When was your, when was your first? I was 26. And I was working as a recruiter in DC and I was in a high pressure job making six figures. I was enjoying it. I loved it, but I worked myself to death and I just lost it. Like I just lost control of my mind. I went into a psychosis and 
Um, what? Where yeah. were you when this happened? I was. Is it in your film? Is no, this no, in your well, film? a little bit. Um, no, I do. Yeah. I, I I used to blog, but okay. I don't have much time for writing anymore. I don't make the time. I should say, but um, no, it was it was scary because it I it was after a week of barely sleeping. So right. um, you know, I had this That'll episode. Happen. Two weeks later, it happened again. I was hospitalized on Christmas Day. Sucked. Um, and then got in, in with good doctors, got a diagnosis, had a year of horrible clinical depression, suicidal thoughts. But I was able to, I had a really good support system around me, good family and good husband and wow. got through it. But then when I was having my children, I have a nine-year-old and an 11-year-old. And the years I was having them, I had postpartum psychosis after my first, and I had antenatal psychosis during pregnancy with my daughter. So you, oh my gosh. I mean, it's something that so many people go through. We just don't talk about it enough, you know? I can't, so, I mean, I could just totally ask you like thousands of questions because that's just, that's just, you. were you at work when it happened? No, it was after work on a Friday night. We were out, we went to see a show, have dinner with friends and it started like I just started talking in circles. I wasn't making any sense. I was trying to get to a point and I and never got to that point. And they're like, something's going on there. So, wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you, so you have two kids, huh? I have two kids. You have three kids, right? Three, three. I have one 13 year old daughter who thinks she's 30 and um, I'm very protective of her, like so protective of her. I've actually called the 12 year old boy and told him never to call her again or I'm calling the cops. <laughs> yes, uh, that was me. <laughs> he was a stalker and I know a stalker because I used to be one. Um, uh, I've got a, nine -year a seven year old girl named Sadie Bell. She's my little artist. And Gunnar Black is my little boy. Oh. He's, he's just a spitfire, but yeah. So yeah. cute. So yeah. actually that was gonna be one of my later questions, but do you talk to your kids about mental health oh yeah i talked to my 13 year old about it you know uh my my seven year old's still young and still like this firecracker you know and of life is just amazing and life is all glow bugs and and unicorns you know mm -hmm. so i'm like i'll wait you know but my 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 13 year old's been through a lot you know i'm, I'm divorced from her mom and mm -hmm. and uh and so she lives with us now and uh so she so the COVID coronavirus thing happened and it actually was good for us because that was the year she came down and we got custody of her and mm. I was going to have to leave for tour. And so mm -hmm. for me, I've gotten to spend her first year with her here That's awesome. and, um, and she's been, you know, she goes through some things and I'm, I'm always the guy that's like, Hey babe, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you thinking of cutting yourself? Are you thinking of doing this? Are you thinking of anything like that? You could always talk to daddy. You know, mm -hmm. daddy used to do that when he was your age. And I don't know why, but I'm just going to let you know that it's okay. Mm -hmm. Why would you cut yourself? That's stupid. And I'm like, okay, okay, she's good. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? But it's, we it's, have it's, to start uh, those conversations early. I'm so about that. I mean, me too. Me too. And hey, I get that question a lot when I speak, if I do like a, a talk on my story, living with bipolar, yeah. I always get the question, are you scared your kids are going to have it? And I'm yeah, like, same, same here you know what, if they do have it someday, who better to help them through it but someone like me, their mother who's been through it. Totally, and I agree, like if, if you and I are where we are right now, look at where we are. Like I'm so blessed to be alive and to not have depression and bipolar ruining my life. I feel like I utilize it for my craft mm -hmm. and I know how to utilize, especially my bipolar, because I'm very manic at some points. Yeah, and I, and, and I, mean I utilize. My Ooh. psychiatrist says a little bit of mania is okay. Which yeah. I she's I, I, people think I'm a trip half the time, but I I know what I want when I want it. I'm great at business because I'm just I'm just blah, you know. I'm great at creative stuff, and and I'm really sensitive, so I'm really sympathetic to other people's feelings. So I utilize the depression and the bipolar um, to let it it defines me, and I and I welcome that's. I welcome it to the dinner table and because it's a piece of me and I'm no longer going, I have depression. I will be a victim. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, hey, this is my buddy, depression. This is my buddy yep. bipolar. They hang out with me. 
get used to it because I'm going to chat your ass off and then I'm going to go home and be sad for an hour and watch TV and not come out of the room. It's me. It's a piece of us. I, I totally relate to that. It's yeah. I'm not going to ignore it. When I accepted it and started talking openly about it was such freedom. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I, my, uh, if I were a kid, I would, I would think it's my superpower. Yes. One of my storytellers, that was her whole speech. Casey, mental illness is my superpower. And it was such a powerful speech. Um, That's exactly that. I'm glad that, that somebody else did, because I thought I was freaking crazy for that one, Eric. No, it is. <laughs> so um, you have been, so since COVID hit, you guys have been doing, I mean, have you always been so active on social media or was it after COVID that you really ramped it up? Oh, I'm always this way. I'm always okay. active. I'm always when I got sober, it was just like, I got to find what's my, th cause I was a speed head, you know, I was a speed head. So it's like, I needed that to focus in. So I had to find my love and my love is creating art and creating music and film and stuff to inspire and make people go, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I love doing because I've always loved that. And so I'm really big into social media when it comes to, motivational direct honesty um sobriety recovery mental awareness i'm huge on it letting pe i'm a solution-based person and I, I have no time to to stir a problem that is bullshit to me that is such a waste of my damn time and my time is precious so it's like i'd rather get to the solution and and social media is the best way that that i can express myself about that kind of stuff like on tuesday nights right now since the mm -hmm. uh cor coronavirus started we do step work i love right? it i just watched the last episode that you just recorded it was so right. good. like we do step work and people out there are actually doing it and we have like three thousand people every tuesday night that come check it out but we i bet we probably have about what do you think eric like 150 200 people that are actually doing it yeah maybe more that are actually doing it but that's step work that's some real shit yeah. When you really put your heart and soul into step work, that's like life changing shit. Mm. If you really do it, you know? Um, so I just like it. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with recovery. I'm obsessed with solutions. I'm obsessed with finding the beauty in life because for 36 years I sat in hell and wondered why I'm so like this. Oh, you I know? loved when the story of how you found your higher power in the film. I don't want to ruin it crazy. for those. Isn't it crazy though? It's, it's so crazy. true. It is crazy. So, it's, and it's, I was wondering where that tattoo was because I knew you had to have it somewhere. And then I saw it when I looked, when I watched the film the second time. Yeah. Love it. Do you yeah. happen to have a studio, a tattoo studio in your house or something? Or <laughs> <tattoo art? laughs> no, I don't, but I'm obsessed with, um, I collect flash tattoo, tattoo uh, work from all around the world. Cool. And this is a painting that I did, but all of this stuff is flash work from some of my favorite tattoo artists. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing is like, I go all around the world playing music and I, have bucket list tattooers. So mm -hmm. I'll go to Berlin and get a tattoo by one of my guys or go to uh, Manchester. It's, it's what a great life. And then I buy their flash and I post it in my studio. I love my it. My whole studio is like this. So it's, I just always feel comfortable in tattoo parlors, old tattoo parlors. So I thought, why not? One of my recent ones was a couple of years ago. Oh, you know, that's, that's whoever did that is really good. He just, I said, mark. I want the word hope. He said, come here. And he just drew it. And then he did. He wrote, yeah. drew it with a, a this one shirt. hurt mm. bad. But my wife, when she, when she saw it, she was like, really? You put a fucking coffin on your throat? <laughs> like why? And I was like, because when I die, I'm going with God. She's like, okay, but a coffin, a coffin. on your throat? I'm like, yes, I go big. Do you have, do you have much room left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, I mean, I've got it all over here, but I have like none on like my butt or like my legs. I got two on my legs. That's it. So I've still got, but it's such a waste to get tattoos on your legs because nobody ever sees them. I don't wear shorts. True. Unless I'm like doing, doing jogging, unless I'm jogging, <laughs> then I wear shorts. But no, everybody's not going to be like, look at his awesome legs with the tattoo. Let me read it. Anyway, I'll show that. No, I love, I love your tattoos. They're awesome. Thank um, you. 
Okay, so what other questions do I have? So tell me more about your, the recent album. So it's not out yet. No, the recent album is, is I'm glad you're talking to me about it because that, what I told you earlier about this, I like to make art about welcoming my condition to the dinner table. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this is the first album that I've made about my depression and and my relationship with it it's i really like it because when people hear this album they're going to be like oh my god that's about a girl oh my god it's like no the whole album is about your relationship with because you know what i'm saying one moment you're justin Mm -hmm. and the next moment you're like where did that fucking thought just come from right oh my god (laughs) you know and so it's this relationship, love, hate relationship. Like there's one line in the song, um, uh, a song called the way I used to love you. Mm -hmm. And it would be perceived as like a a romantic song, but there's a part in it that says late at night, I sit and stare alone. I share the weight of how I used to love you. Mm -hmm. Your color's gone. Just like when every winter comes, I miss the way I used to love you. Mm -hmm. Like, that is a direct feeling. There's a, there's a loneliness and a romance with this depression and this despair that I used to feel that I miss sometimes. Yeah. But then when it's there, I'm like, ah, oh, you know? So it's romantic, it's sad, it's beautiful. And that's, that's who I am. Romantic, sad, beautiful, and funny as hell. Right, Eric? Yeah. The first single is so great. Oh My My, oh, I have oh, it. Oh My My. I jog to it. I sing Thanks. it. I love it. And the acoustic that you just put out about it too is great. Oh my God. She's like all over this. This is great. Well, yeah, I, have I to admit, I don't know all your other albums. I only. Uh, please. That's okay. That's okay. But I do love the hits, the Into the Ocean. Yeah. Me. Those, I do love the hits, she says. I love hits. the hits. <laughs> it's funny because Oh My My is probably the only one that I would say I didn't write directly about depression. Mm-hmm. because I wrote it uh, about dropping my daughter off. My, my, she was 12 then at her first day of middle school in this town. Mm. And she's kind of like, you know, a little emo, a little sad chick, you know, like her dad a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. likes that lo-fi sad music. And she got out of the car and she walked in and I remember all the boys went like, who's that new girl? (laughs) Who's the sad girl? Mm -hmm. And it took me back to when I was in middle school and high school and that romance of seeing someone and just being so smitten by them. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about, you know, Uh, you know, smoking cigarettes in the, in the parking lot Mm -hmm. waiting for, you know, and, and, and that's what really took me there for that song. So, Oh My My is definitely about my daughter going to her first day of seventh grade. You know, it's crazy. It's great that she has such a supportive dad. No, I love her. I'd do anything for her. What about the acoustics that you've been playing on, like the recent episode of Recovery, of the Recovery Steps? Where right. can folks find those? Everywhere. <laughs> Ever. mm-hmm. if I've, I've been doing this for, what, 25 years now with Blue October, and we have so many albums out, but the acoustic versions of all those, we I made a, a streaming site during COVID. During, I guess people just call mm-hmm. it during COVID. During is that like the new lingo? Yep. Remember way back during COVID? You know? um, <laughs> during but, quarantine. Yeah, during quarantine. There you go. Uh, we made a streaming site called um, Get Back Up TV. Mm-hmm. And everything I've been doing since COVID and coronavirus started, we've been posting on Get Back Up TV because it's just all, and it's called Positively Justin. Awesome. And every episode is recovery. There's a recovery section. And then there's cover songs that have always gotten me through stuff, like a Bonnie Raitt song, a George Michael song, a Cure song, a, you know, a country song, a Garth Brooks. I think I do a Garth Brooks song. Oh, I love you know? country. Me too. I do too. The Dance. I do that song, The Dance I, by Garth Brooks. I got to see Garth Brooks play. He got the Mark Twain Prize this year. And I got to see him last year. No. Is he still that, amazing? It was right before COVID hit, so it was March. He was incredible. It was really good. He's just such 
such a pimp. That guy is so awesome, dude. He is so awesome. Not like an actual pimp. I meant like he's, you know, <laughs> awesome. But yeah, yeah. And so that's where folks can go to see the film. They can go to see the film. They can go watch all the steps if they want. They're interested in working steps with me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I just wish I always had that because steps mm -hmm. are very hard to do, and it's very hard for people to go find a sponsor because mm -hmm. it's very intimidating. And going to AA groups or NA groups, it's you, I do that. I needed to go to three at a time at first, mm -hmm. but. I know a lot of people just sit in their rooms and they're on their computer and this allows them to be able to go there and just type in getbackup.tv and go to the recovery on the catalog and bam, there's step one through eight. And then next Tuesday we do nine, 10, 11, 12, and then they just repeat it for the rest of their life. And if so, they really believe in it, it'll be good. So Justin, when did, when would you say you like really found solid recovery and sobriety? Uh, really solid. I could say the day I arrived at Cumberland Heights, but I was very confused because I couldn't get past step two, which is finding a higher power. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe there was a God. I didn't believe there was anything. And I always was like, oh, really? Now I got to think of Jesus. I was like that, you know, even though my mom raised me as a Christian, mm -hmm. I was still like, oh, I'm too good for that. I'm too cool for that, you know? And, uh, but I would say that it was when I was on day 74, and I found that be when I found when that moment happened, I was so desperate. Mm -hmm. I was in such need of guidance that I just couldn't find myself. And I saw all these other people finding it and getting it like a light bulb turning on in their head. And once that happened, I'll be honest with you. Like I've never been the same person. Mm -hmm. It it's hard to explain. I think I explained it on the documentary. Well, but yeah. it's so much bigger than that. That's when it all went. Click. There's a Santa Claus. There's an Easter Bunny. There is heaven. There is beauty. There's diving into an ocean for the first time. There's smelling rain. There's touching a girl's hand for the first time. Mm -hmm. Remember all that, Justin? Mm -hmm. It's real. And it's still in your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's when I was like, this is going to be possible. I'm a badass and I deserve this. Thank you, God, for coming into my life. What year and it was, was like a warm feeling. I remember being like almost knocked on my feet, knocked off my feet that day. It was cool. What year was it? Uh, 2012. Okay. May 10th is when I went in there. So 2012. Mm. I had to get that tattoo just of a boxer of my sober date. So, yeah. That's awesome. So what advice would you have for people new in recovery? I know, I mean, you have the 12 step that you, you know, the, the IGTV you're doing, which is incredible, but what, uh, what else, like, what would you say helped you in early recovery? Uh, straight up, honest, brutal, honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where it gets rough because people don't like when I sponsor them because I'm like a um, drill sergeant. Mm. like for real um i tell people things like uh it's time not to be a little bitch anymore i tell them things like um when you're brand new to this recovery thing there's only two things that you have to do and that's go to meetings and don't and use that's mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. that's it you go to me i would go to three a day i would stay there i would literally stay there and then i'd go home eat go to bed oh there's another day i made it Whoo! Mm -hmm. You know, it was that hardcore and constantly working the steps. It's really simpler, a lot more simple than people think. Mm -hmm. It really is. You just don't use, don't use I every think, minute. I think that way about like managing my bipolar. Um, you know, there's certain things you do. You, you protect your sleep. You get a good night's sleep. You, there you, go. you get, 30 minutes of exercise a day, you eat healthy, yeah. you know, um, it's like not rocket science, but once you get into that groove of doing that, it becomes easier every day. It does. It really does. And I'll be honest with you. The best thing I ever did in my life was get rid of the negative people. People don't get that enough. And I preach it. I preach it like I'm a freaking pastor. I have boundaries today. And that's the most amazing thing. I do not let negative people in my life. I don't let drama in my life. I don't allow it 
and I'm brutal about it. If someone's in my house speaking drama, I ask them to leave. Mm -hmm. If someone's in my studio vibing me wrong, I ask them to leave because I'm powerless, which is the step one. You're powerless, right? Mm -hmm. Powerless in your life is unmanageable. What also powerless works with, I'm powerless over what you think of me. Mm -hmm. I'm powerless whether or not you're going to be hurt if I need you to leave because you're just being negative and sucking the positivity out of me. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't do it anymore. I went through, well, my wife went through my phone when I was in rehab and went, delete, delete, delete. delete. Yeah. And that's, that's it. Good. And she got me a new number and I got out and that's what happened. But they're my friends. No, they're not. Mm. No, they're not. You know, I have very strict boundaries these days and that helps me. And I can spot spiritually sick people mm. whew, because I used to be one mm. and what's that term you spot it you got it mm. you know like wow the reason he's annoying me is because that used to be me oh my gosh <laughs> be nice to people you know so so what are some other things you do to take care of yourself do you do you meditate by chance oh yeah I meditate I'm a huge uh huge meditator um i don't sit and go oh, i'm gonna be my blah, blah. you know i literally have to find a silent spot and i pray every morning mm -hmm. i pray every single night um every night i go outside and i sit in the quiet and mm. look at the stars and i just thank god every night i every night for eight years and i have to be alone I thank god for every single moment of that day mm. and i ask him to get me through another day eight years i've been doing it every single night and i just whoo, breathe mm -hmm. i can't tell you how many times i'm having a bad day i'll stop and i'll pray i'll go into a quiet place and i'll just be like please 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 god i need your help right now just thy will be done thy will be done and I, it helps it really does help i meditate i practice solution-based thinking i practice uh, positivity um, always. My wife thinks it's annoying sometimes because I'm always just like, well, babe, babe, if this is all we got to fight about, let's be grateful for that. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God. Oh, sure. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It. I eat right. Because yeah. I can tell when I eat bad, my yes. mood switches. Like mm -hmm. you said, when I run, even mm -hmm. though I hate running, I can run a mile maybe straight and then I have to walk and then I can maybe run another mile. Mm -hmm. But when I run, I'm a badass. I like, know. I, I feel the same thing. I just ran two miles the other day. I was listening right? to my, my, Ooh. I did it in 24 minutes and I was really impressed with myself. That's amazing. A mile. But, That's amazing. Well, it's, you know, it's just, it, you feel good when you get the blood pumping through your heart and. It's You're true. listening to good music. So. It's true. And I, and I have to eat in the morning. I have to eat healthy, but I have to eat in the morning or else I'm just, oh, my, you know, I'm 44 now, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like I'm 16, mm -hmm. you know, but when I don't feel like that and I'm tired and I'm anxious and I, it's because of three things, either I'm hungry, either I'm tired mm -hmm. or I'm not right spiritually, Yeah, you know, and I might've said or done something that wasn't true and hurt somebody's feelings and I need to go check on that. Mm. You know, and then if I did, if I'm like my assistant, Eric, uh, my engineer, if I, if maybe I was rude or something, I'll ask him and then we'll get it over with and we'll move forward. Yeah. But I have to, I have to. Do you, um, do you do therapy regularly too? No, I have a, uh, uh, I used to do a lot of therapy, but for probably the first two years of my sobriety, I do a lot of recovery. That's mm -hmm. all I do, and that but I'm such a, a busy guy that like mm -hmm. stopping for an hour and a half to go talk to a person that I'm paying yeah. about what it just, <laughs> it, it would irk me right now, you know, because, cause it's like, <laughs> I, I feel like I finally understand who I am and what works mm -hmm. that it's like, unless my wife said, Hey, we need to go to therapy or Hey, something like this then hell yeah, I'd go. I think therapy's dope. I love therapy. But right. my whole life I've been in therapy mm -hmm. from these make-believe things or I was too high and now I'm schizophrenic and my whole life hospitals. And now I'm finally like, wow, you cleaned your brain up. Just keep doing the next right thing. Yeah. And you're good. And yes, I still have panic attacks. Yes, I still 
have earth shattering depression belts, but I know what to do when I, when I have them, that's you so know, true. and that's the best thing about it. You know, it's great. So I heard, I think on your recovery IGTV that you're, you have a show coming up in July. I do July 25th. We're doing our first, um, blue October full band show on this huge sound stage. And um, it's going to be pretty cool. We're, I'm pretty excited. In Texas, really excited. where's it going to be? It's going to be on getbackup.tv. Okay. Uh, the same place that the documentary. We're going to funnel everything through getbackup.tv so they can be inspired when they get there and see all the things that are happening. Um, and it's, we're going to be playing for two, two and a half hours. And it's going to be like a real show. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. I bet it'll feel yeah. good to get back up on a stage. It'll feel really good. I'm seriously like crazy about this Corona stuff. Like my dad has cancer. My daughter mm -hmm. has severe asthma. So I'm like, ah, but I like have to be around people. But when I'm around people, I just, it's, it's, you know, it's so weird for everyone right now. It has been weird, but I, I feel like it's like shifted. It's, it's made us have to shift how we do everything. And so for us doing this, I mean, we never yeah. would have had the opportunity to meet you and do something like this and, um, and shifting our shows to virtual, uh, just challenging, but we're going to, I feel like we're going to be able to reach more people. And I'm sure you're reaching so many people through get back up TV. I think it's, it's one thing that I told my wife the other night, I'm so grateful not for the coronavirus, but for the time. I've never been at home for more than two months. Mm -hmm. So I've always been on tour. I've gotten to be home for six months now. I've never done that. I've gotten to know my wife mm -hmm. in the past six months, a way I've never known her before. And it's beautiful. It's amazing. I've gotten to learn how to, to, um, to, to work on my, my land, you know, I'm like building trails for my kids and awesome. like in a bobcat tractor, like what the hell is that? You know, I'm wearing <laughs> trucker caps. I'm like turning into a damn farmer. But, um, but I've got the main thing is I told my wife the other night, like I've gotten so close to God and the spiritual world of my recovery by doing these steps with other people on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. Like I've never been so close to my recovery than I am mm -hmm. right now and in shape and eating right and making, creating great music. Mm -hmm. And then this documentary comes out and I'm just like, what could get better? I mean, it, it really, nothing could actually get better. You know? Yeah. It's a special time. It's just definitely been scary. It was scary, scary. at first. It was scary at first. I think we've gotten to a point where we're in this new normal and you know, uh, there was a time when it first came that, I was so paranoid that every night that I had it, were you, did you go through I was, that? I was scared because my husband, his job, he's considered essential. So he has to go in yeah. and him going in and then coming home. It's like, uh, but yeah. we wow. just push through. I mean, it's. I remember one time I started feeling kind of, and I was like, and I remember freaking myself out. And of course it was just allergies because I live right in the middle of a cedar field. I think you did the same thing, Eric, right? Mm -hmm. He told me the next day, he's like, I just, uh, I don't know. And I'm like, wait, take this Claritin. And I'm like, oh, wow, that was great. Yeah, <laughs> good. That's good. Yeah. But we've, Eric is my, my right-hand man and we write together all the Blue October stuff and we, mm -hmm. we make the, Eric is actually the one who composed uh, some of the music in the documentary mm. we needed some uh uh what do you call it um, Score. scoring mm -hmm. ambience and he's the one that did all that ambient beautiful music you hear Love the it. Bzzzing, bzzzing, all that stuff he did that i'm really proud of him good job eric yeah, yeah good job eric <laughs> well i guess i mean i i just am so grateful that you took the time to of course talk with me justin and I mean, you're such an inspiration for, for guys out there. I guess if I had an, a last question, it would be, you know, what's your message for guys out there and dealing with their mental health? Do you have any words of wisdom that you yeah. can offer? Oh, yeah. Uh, straight up, this is it. And please listen. <clears throat> you can't effectively work on your mental health until you clean out the room. You cannot, Eric put it this way, you can't organize a house that is uh, a, a hoarder. You can't be a hoarder and organize your house. Mm -hmm. This is your home, your head. You mm -hmm. have to treat it 
like it is made of glass. You have to clean it. You have to clean it all out. Don't smoke weed on top of it. Don't drink alcohol if you're having depression problems. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you have a problem with drinking. I'm mm -hmm. not saying you're an alcoholic. I'm not saying you're a drug addict. But if you want to find answers about your depression, mm -hmm. if you want to find out why you're sad, why you have panic attacks, why you feel this way, why you're manic, why you feel like you're in despair and, and, and you, you, why, then you have to start with a clean palette. Mm. You can't, you can't, you can't paint someone else's painting if there's already paint on it. You've got to have a clean canvas in order to find what you need effectively to work on your mental illness. And that's the one thing I see in a lot of people <clears throat> that come up to me when I'm at shows and stuff and they, they tell me about their depression and how hard it is, but then I just smell beer on them. And I'm just like, I just want to be like, God, if you would just listen to me and just don't do that and don't do that. And then really focus on medication, activities, what you're putting into your body is food and the people you're around. Those mm -hmm. four things, medication, activities, positive people. Mm -hmm. And what was the fourth one? The people around you. Yeah, the people around you. I think that's what I said. Wait, wait. Neg Where, what was it again? Hold on, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Negative people, the positive people, uh, uh, what you put in your body, medication and staying active. There you go. Yeah. That's it. So have you, have you checked out TikTok yet by chance? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've checked out TikTok. Oh, God, I knew it when it was musically. Yeah. I only knew it when it became TikTok. And when COVID hit, I found that it was a nice, fun, creative distraction. And right. so I started something on there. I started making fun little videos. And then I started a little series that I called The Mental Health Mindset. And it, okay. was just, it was just, what is your, what is your TikTok uh, name? So I can go follow you. It's just Jennifer Marshall, the number nine. Jennifer, you know, J E N N I F E R. I'm going to double check right now. Cause I haven't yeah, been that. on it in a while. Yeah. It's Jennifer Marshall, the number nine. Okay. Um, Jennifer Marshall, M A R S H A L L S H A L L. L, number nine. Nine. Okay. That was my number in water polo. I played water polo in college. Ooh, I was a swimmer. You were? Water polo? I played water polo. Oh my God. I was a, a, a breaststroker. I was nice. fast as hell. Water polo was crazy because you can't touch the bottom ever. Yeah. You have to it's tread fast. water the whole game. Mm -hmm. I was never very good, but I met my best friends in the whole world. So wow. it was fun. My kids are swimmers. My really, they're, they're both butterflyers for the most part. My son Ooh. he likes backstroke too, but can't yeah. do butterfly, man. I can do it, but that thing is just it takes some body power. Yeah, it's fun. I was never a dolphin kicker. I was more of a frog. Do your kids you know. swim? Oh yeah, they love it. They mm -hmm. absolutely adore it. They're like little minnows. My actually, my four year old went to swim practice the other day and. My wife said that he walked up to the pool and just, he didn't know how to swim, okay? Yeah. He just walked right up to it and just jumped in and he sank to the bottom. Blah, 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 blah. And the swim coach is like, what are you doing? <laughs> Let me like, teach you first. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. It's yeah, great, it's a though. good sport. It's fun to watch them. My, my husband swam too, so it's fun to watch them enjoy a sport that we both loved. It's the best uh, form of working out too. Like it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's so good for your body. It's, it's not bad on your knees or anything like that, but, but I really just appreciate you having me on your show and um, I'm going to watch your documentary now that you've watched mine twice. Well, thank you. And if and you ever need anything, please reach back out. I'll be right here for you. I will. I will. I so appreciate it. And we're going to put the link to uh, the doc in our comments down here. We're going to be chatting and um, I, I want to definitely want to stay in touch. I just so appreciate you being a voice for men's mental health and men's recovery because That's great. we need more guys like you speaking out. Well, if when touring starts, we'll have to meet up and go get a cup of coffee and then I'll put you and your hubby on the guest list for the show. Oh my God. And maybe we can do something with this is my brave at the show and we can 
create some more stuff going on, okay? That would be amazing because you were going to be in the DC area, but then the, it got put pushed back. So I'll I'll watch your calendar and let you know. Okay. All right. Awesome. Justin, thank you so much. Thank you. And you have a wonderful day. And seriously, if you ever need anything else, just call me back. Okay. Awesome. We'll do. Thanks. Okay. Jeff. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.